Hi everyone for coming tonight. Uh, for those few that are here, it's just Lawrence and me in the extra room and everyone else who is online here, thanks for joining. Um, tonight's meeting is sponsored by the Computing and Mathematical Sciences School here at the University of Waikato and the Big Blue Button Instance is sponsored by New Zealand Open Source Society, so thanks for that. Tonight's topic will be Koki TTS, which he will be presenting, and he'll be looking specifically at the text-to-speech aspect of that library. Over to you, Ian. Great, thanks, Peter. And um, everyone. Um, yeah, so I'm going to talk about Koki TTS. Um, it's apparently a Puerto Rican word, and it's the name of a, a, a tree frog, okay? And TTS is text to speech, which is also known as speech synthesis. Um, if you go back and look at machines that speak, um, I think teddy bears used to have something you could bang them with your fist and that would make a noise. Uh, and then they came, you had toys that you pulled a little string out the back of the, the, the toy and it would um, play a little record and talk. Um, I can remember about 40 years ago, I had a flatmate with an alarm clock that would talk. Um, but I think it just said, wake up, wake up. I don't think it actually said what the time was. Um, and you've, you've had answer phones for quite a long time. Um, and those, those sort of systems are, are really just playing local audio files. Um, and I think uh, the... Uh, if they have to inject any intelligence into like an answer phone message, then um, the quality is not, is, is, it's pretty obvious that you've got a machine to you and not a person. Um, I, I've noticed that um, supermarkets now, all the service checkout uh, machines, they will uh, babble away to you. Um, but I'm pretty sure everything's in stock sentences. They they um, are just playing an audio file that, that is one whole sentence or two sentences. And again, there's no kind of logic to it. They, they don't sort of say, you know, your total comes to ten dollars fifty six or anything like that. They just say um, swipe your know, credit card now, um, and, and they can just play a, a standard um, message for that. Um, going back 20 years or so, uh, one of the first offline text-to-speech uh, systems was called eSpeak, which runs on Linux, and I'm not sure about other platforms, probably. Um, and some years back, that became eSpeak Next Generation NG. Um, it, it's, um, well, we'll ha have a little listen to it later on, but... Um, the its audio quality um, nowadays is is uh, not not that great, but I believe it's been ported to hundreds of languages or a couple of hundred or something. Um, that that uh, be, because it speaks in um, and just using phonomes, it can um, it, it can speak other uh, easy enough to convert to other languages, and. Um, Google have had an online text-to-speech uh, system for a while. Um, if you go into Google Translate, then you'll um, got when you put in your phrase that you want translated, you can normally listen to it and say in English, and also if it translates to French, you can hear it said in French. But there's an API into that, and um, so you can you can actually make use of that yourself with a Python program. Um, so just to look at some of the, the um, um, code that would be involved for uh, making machines talk, this one here is using uh, eSpeak NG. So we import, uh, having downloaded the eSpeak NG module for Python, we import eSpeaking. Um, we um, instantiate it and then 
you just have a dot say and as a, um, a method and, and this will um, speak whatever text you've got there. Um, this wait for prayer of equal true didn't work so I had to throw in a little um, loop here <clears throat> to wait until um, the, the talking finishes. Otherwise it would just, it would uh, want that executed and race straight on to do that. Um, th this first sentence is, will be set at the, the normal default pitch and then I crank up the pitch and the words per minute and, and say something again and um, then I crank it back and um, slow it down again. So we'll have a little listen to that. Um, and is there anything here? No, that's just where I, I got the code from. Um, I'll just, before I do the, the demo, it, I'll just um, do some other bits of code. Um, there is a module you can import for Python called uh, GTTS. And um, this is designed to go out to Google's uh, text-to-speech server and, uh, or I guess it's the translate server, and um, sort of hack into it and um, bring, bring, bring back a file as an MP3 file. And then you use something like uh, MP, uh, MPV to play that file. Um, I haven't looked into what method of uh, communication this GTTS module uses, but um, before I found that, I'd actually written two of them myself. Um, so this one here is uh, one that Lawrence helped me write using uh, URLib and subprocesses, etc. So this, um, where does it do it? We we build up the the string we want to send to Google. Um, so what language and some obligatory stuff, and then the message we're going to send, um, and then we fire it off. I think yeah, I think that's how it works. <laughs> um, where does it go out down the pipe? Try. Okay, so that was what I wrote, and um, then I, I, um, oops, I thought I had another one. Um, I have written another one, which I think I'll show later on. Um, one of the things you you can do when you're using this Google uh, TTS, or even with eSpeak, is you can build logic into the um, the, the text that you're going to speak. So. Uh, I've made a little clock program which will say the time and it, it will say that, you know the time is on the hour of whatever or it's five past the five past such as that or ten past quarter past so it'll pick from this list and it will build up the sentence that uh, it is to say you know and and it'll finish with you know it's six o'clock at night or six o'clock in the morning or in the afternoon, things like that. Um, so I'll demo that, and yeah, that oh, that that particular say time program, um, it's using a G Streamer to uh, feed the data up to Google, and then to get the um, uh, MP3 file back. Uh, and this is a little bit of initializing the G streamer and making use of uh, what's called Playbin, which is a um, with G streamer you you put a whole lot of elements together. But Playbin is is a sort of a compilation. It's got um, you know the ability to send and then wait and receive. So it, it, it's a, it, with one one element you can do the whole thing. So it's quite slick, really, the way that works. So we can have a look at that. Um, okay, so now just exit this and demo those. Um, so the first one should be eSpeak, which is uh, um, 
pretty old. Uh, oh, is that font size? I might just increase the font thing. I think control shift. Is that all right? Um, this is eSpeak Next Generation Access Time Python Module eSpeaking. This is the default English voice. This is eSpeak Next Generation Access Time Python Module eSpeaking. This is the default English voice with a pitch of 120 and words per minute setting of 225. My pitch is back to 50 and my words per minute is back to 175. Okay, so that was um, about the question. Question from Lawrence, if you come close to the mic. Yeah, Ian, I think, did I mention those mimic voices on the WLUG list? Um, the, the, it's a set of open source voices. They've taken some older code and developed it. And uh, the, did I mention that on the list? I don't know whether I, whether no. I did or not. But if not, I can. Because um, the, the, this, this company, they, they took this code, they sell a device and they also have all the plans of the device on GitHub. Uh, it's a little gadget with a cute little face on it and it can speak things at you. It's got a Raspberry Pi, of course, and it runs the, this Mimic software, but you can build the Mimic software on any Linux box. And uh, it has some, I, I did a quick check, it seems to be quali decent quality voices. Maybe we'll give it a try and see how it compares. If you want to try different voices different okay. sources of, yeah voices and see and see whether because that eSpeak one is very robotic isn't it mimic yeah, uh, pretty, uh, MIC. <laughs> pretty uh, outdated now yeah, yeah. Um, i think the thing with eSpeak was um the matter of not using too much cpu you know 20 years ago and not um yeah. requiring too much disk space and all those sort of um, yeah that's right so the things the company name also began with M, but I can't remember. Now might be any man text to speech. Search on GitHub for my name. That'll narrow it down. Oh, we can have a look at the end. Yeah. I'll find something. Yeah. Okay, well, we'll just have a look. If you'll notice the quality improves when we go to um, should be four eight three. This this should be uh... Welcome to Google Text to Speech. I know you are in New Zealand, so I am the one that talks to you in English. However, I'm an Aussie. If you were in the UK, a British person would be talking to you. Okay, so you notice that's um, a lot better quality uh, of of speech. And uh, okay, I'll just do the next one. And I think that was using that G uh, TTS module from Python. And, Okay, I'll see what this one is. Let me just turn off my microphone. GSpeak is a Python 3 program that uses Google Translate. Bonjour, comment allez-vous? Guten Morgen. Yeah, I think it sports about 20 different languages. Um, so, so long as you can um, <coughs> write the text in that language. Then you can uh, um, get it to talk in that language, um, and like I said, it it picks up whereabouts in the world you are. I'll, I'll demonstrate that later, and uh, that's how it knows to um, or knows uh, which voice to give you. So that's why it, New Zealanders end up uh, when they when they go to Google, they end up with a a lady from Aussie. Okay, this is trying to build a bit of logic in Sorry, I'll turn my mic off. This is building a bit of logic into the Python, uh, using Python to build a bit of logic into your program. So 
it, it constructs the sentence based on what the time is. So uh, I'll just talk, hit this and we'll see what it sounds like. Oops. It's Google speech. The time is soon to be 20 to 8 in the evening. July the 11th of 2022 is Monday and the time is soon to be 20 to 8 in the evening. So, um, if you were building logic into a Python program, then depending on what the, uh, what the, in, the user was doing, you probably need to have reasonably fast response. Uh, times to be able to um, yeah, be acceptable. If it took five minutes to do that translation, then you know you can't really expect the. You'd be better off to play wave files than. Um, and I think this is the one where I demonstrate. Uh, oh, this is using GStreamer, um, so it's just another example but a different way of actually communicating with Google. Yeah. Good day. I speak with an Australian accent. Good morning. I speak with a British accent. Howdy. I speak with an American accent. Yeah, so that's Google um, Translate. And it, depending on whereabouts you connect into Google will depend on which voice you, you get for, for, for English countries. Okay, so I'll carry on. Um, so let's go to getting up to date with what's happening with speech synthesis. And as soon as you start <clears throat> investigating that, you, you bang yourself up against a whole lot of terminology that you mightn't have come across before. Um, speech synthesis is, uh, nowadays, is they talk about acoustic models and then uh, the, trying to build prosody, is it, into, um, into the, the text. And you have a vocoder, which is uh, on the output of, of your speech synthesis um, to give uh, the voice quality or the voice, um, whatever, the, the, the characteristics, I guess you call. Um, what, what they're doing now is using deep neuronal networks, DNNs, and um, part of the process uses a MAL spectrogram, um, which you can read about at that link. And um, there's also, you'll hear talk about speech data sets. <clears throat> so um, text-to-speech steps, the, the first step is generating a frequency representation of the sentence, which is the MAL spectrogram. And the second step is um, from that spectrogram, generating the waveform for, for, for this representation. So if we go, the sentence for text to speech might be, I am your father. And then the phonemes uh, of that would be written as that, I believe. It's sort of like a, a linguistic language that someone's come up with. And then that will be treated by um, the acoustic model. Okay. And it will produce this spectrogram which you don't have to look at it, it just can be um, kept internal, but that spectrogram is then passed to the voc vocoder, okay? And the vocoder will convert it back to a waveform. And theoretically the vocoder, uh, I think it's the vocoder, can de determine whether that could be a, man, you know, a man's voice or a, fem a female voice. Um, based on what, what what was in the spectrogram. Um, so there's a sort of a neural network here and another one here. Neural, so there's two lots of neural networks. Anyway, we then get a waveform and 
out comes the audio to the loudspeaker. So that's sort of the, the steps involved for um, uh, text-to-speech. And um, if you look at <clears throat> um, how much has been going on lately, then in the last five years or so, these are all the different bits and pieces of different modules and different papers that people have written uh, of different ideas of, of ways of doing text-to-speech. Um, and I got this, here's a link up here for where I got this uh, image from. Um, so there's a fair bit of development in the whole field of text-to-speech in the last five years. Um, just to look at the, the color of these boxes, if it's yellow, then it's an acoustic model. And if it's brown, it's a vocoder. And then that there's another thing which they talk about called end-to-end text-to-speech. -end, um, and they should start with um, yellow and fade through to brown. Um, <coughs> when, when we get on to doing Kotki TTS, the defaults, when you just say, okay, go and say this, you know, um, here's some text, speak it. Um, by the default, it, it will use the uh, Tacotron 2 uh, module here for, for doing the um, modeling, acoustic modeling. And for the vocoder, it uses this uh, uh, Hi-Fi GAN module here. Uh, but in theory, um, it's, it's not like uh, Kotki TTS said those are the only two. You can have other ones, so you, or you can have all <laughs> all three. You can have all th the uh, acoustic model and a vocoder and an end-to-end -end system. So um, it, it's actually quite messy when you when you look into Kotki to work out. Um, what are you going to pick and choose? And, and then you've got to find out which works best and which doesn't. So um, just moving on to how a spectrogram works, um, you've got the x-axis is time and the y-axis is frequency going up here. And the color or the z-axis is um, the power or volume. So this is a person who went, that, that represents probably five seconds. So they just went, I, I, right, like that. And down here is the fundamental or the lowest frequency of it. And I assume, yeah. And then then the sort of harmonic components of it. And that, that determines, you know, the letter. That's what a letter A um, looks like. And... When we do an E, then there's, there's less harmonic component in here, and uh, this is a bit thinned out, but um, still your main, your, your main, um, um, what are they called, main frequencies down the bottom here. And then an I is very colourful with uh, harmonics oh, in you. So if you feed that into an ex a spectrogram and... Um, You've got metadata associated with it that um, says, well, that's someone saying the letter A and that's someone saying a letter E. If, if that person was a woman, then it, it would have a you know, it, it's got her characteristics of her voice. But theoretically, you can, when, when you want to read it back, you could say, oh, well, I'm going to change it so the voice will sound like a man when, when it's spoken. Um, by changing uh, different um, um, components, different a different mix of the um, uh, harmonics and things. Okay, so that that's um, in theory what what is meant to be the beauty of it is that you can uh, train <clears throat> the system so it, w one person's voice can train the system with all the letters and all the sounds you can possibly make. And then um, the vocoder uh, or the acoustic model, would, no, I think it's a vocoder, it, it, it can then um, take that um, person's voice and actually change it to somebody else's voice. So um, 
Oops, I'll just go back. Uh, just one other thing to mention: this up the this axis here, it looks to me like they've put the frequency in uh, hertz. Um, but there is a scale called the melody scale, which is sort of based on just um, the way human hearing works. Um, we can notice a change in pitch in lower notes a lot easier than we can uh, recognize a change in pitch of uh, higher notes. And uh, so um, we don't have a linear um, frequency re response, I suppose, or frequency you know, acknowledgement or something. So this is, they, you'll see that they refer to MEL spectrograms. So these are spectrograms that have been fed through a, um, um, a mathematical formula to, to change them to the melody scale. Anyway, we'll get, we'll, that'll all fit into place shortly. So <clears throat> finally we get to a bit of what Kotke is all about. And uh, I mentioned it's, um, it's called uh, Koki because the frog is well known for being small but having a loud, clear voice, apparently. And um, it seems that in 2016, developers at Mozilla commenced uh, open source projects. Um, and then, the, uh, for example, the deep speech engine uh, from Mozilla was used for speech uh, to text. <coughs> and um, it's still still there on Mozilla, actually. You can uh, check out that link. Um, and they also started on text-to-speech engines. Um, and another thing they did was captured thousands of hours of speech training data. Okay, or well, they've spent thousands of hours capturing speech training data. Um, they started the uh, Koki organization, which was a fork, a, a fork of the deep speech. Um, this is their main website. Um, they use .ai, which um, I forget which country in the world that is, but I think because because they uh, are involved in using artificial intelligence, they wanted to use that um, that uh, uh, register with that country. Um, the GitHub rep repository is there, and and from PyPy, you, you download the project from, from there. Um, we could look at those, but maybe a bit later. Okay, um, to do the installation, I use Mate2204 of Ubuntu. And um, uh, the first thing we really want to do is put it all into a, um, a virtual environment. So I, I pulled down um, the VE and V module. Um, then when I actually started to do the install, I got a, an error, which was um, it wanted python.h something. So I had to do this, uh, add that one to it. Um, and then here I am creating my virtual environment and activating it. And I just did a pip install TTS, but I did see someone else, and it's probably better practice to do it, they did a pip install and then they um, said pip set up tools, wheels, and TTS uh, and upgrade. So um, that way you've got the, you're running the latest version of pip and these these um, other tools modules. Um, another thing, <laughs> despite everything it does download, it doesn't actually download anything to to make the noise out your speakers. So um, I, I downloaded Python MPV. Um, okay, and the install is um, pretty serious sort of install. There's 83 Python libraries, and it, I, I get a reading of about 3.3 gigabytes or more, a bit, a bit over that, um, that was downloaded. And um, so of the 83 Python libraries, here's the first page of them. Um, I don't know whether there's anything especially to mention these here seem to be all different you know different languages that it's support that it has i don't know what a, a g-r-u-u-t is though um yeah 
I don't know whether Kiwi Solver was done by some New Zealanders, possibly. Um, but Matplotlib and uh, NumPy is there. Um, Pandas, just for Peter's sake. Um, uh, the the biggest um, module that gets downloaded is Torch, and that was uh, 776 megabytes. So, um, whoop, well, quite a lot of um, uh, data to download to, to get it working. Um, in order to get this um, uh, text to speech working, you need a speech data set. And one of the ones that's uh, quite popular was uh, created by uh, Linda Johnson and Keith Ito, I guess his name is. And um, it's uh, open source and it's available freely. And um, <clears throat> what it is, is um, um, I don't know whether it's Linda Johnson's voice, but um, she got um, about 13,000 passages from seven non-fiction books that were published uh, between what, 1884 and 1964. Um, the books, one of them is a cooking book, another one's about the assassination of JFK. I um, can't remember what the, what, what the others are. Um, but she doesn't read the whole book in, she just reads clips from it. And as you can see, the, the average duration of a clip, it could be a sentence from the book, somewhere in the book. And um, uh, so it's six and a half seconds is the average duration. Um, and there's well, a total of 13,100. Total words, you know, a quarter of a million were getting there. Um, total characters over a million. And if you play the WAV files, these were all, originally they were all captured as um, MP3 files, but have been converted to WAV files. If you play, play them, they're um, nearly 24 hours of, of, um, of these little clips, okay? Um, and what else was I going to say? This lady, Linda Johnson, she worked for LibriVox, or, which is... Um, provides talking books, I think open source talking books, okay? Um, I didn't download it because that's another 2.6 gigabytes, right? So um, what I do download has been based around um, having used this data set, is the idea, okay? Um, so having uh, maybe linda johnson was the recording engineer or, or she could have actually been the person reading the book i'm not sure but um the, this keith chap he he created data files metadata files associated with each one of the thirteen thousand wave files and it all fits into a, um, a transcripts.csv file and um for each line uh uh, for each record, uh, it takes one line, and they use the pipe character. Um, I would assume that's because the comma is, uh, is is reflected in the in some sentences as a as a pause. Uh, so so you couldn't have comma delimited um, uh, values. Um, there's only three three i uh, four uh, three fields. Um, one is the ID. Uh, which corresponds with the wave file, and they use names like, um, oh, it's just numbered, I think, they're just numbered. Um, and there's a transcription of the words spoken by the reader, and a normalized transcription uh, where uh, the numbers, a transcription with numbers, ordinals, and monetary units expanded into full words. So if you had like one ST, they would change that to first, or 2ND would become second, that sort of thing. Um, um, so each audio file is 16-bit WAV file. Okay, and yeah. Um, yeah, the data set is public domain. There's, they're up to version 1.1. There was um, 30 mistakes in version 0. 
that have been fixed. Um, uh, each clip boundaries generally align with the sentence or clause boundaries, but not always. Um, okay, the text was matched to the audio, audio manually and checked so that um, there shouldn't be any discrepancy in that um, transcript CSV file. Um, yeah, when doing the recording, I read um, of some other place where they were um, building a similar uh, data set and they got hum into the recording and it meant that everybody spoke with hum. <laughs> so when, when you did do a text to speech, the person spoke with hum. Um, so you want to have a, a high quality, clean recording to start with. Um, Apparently in this LJ uh, speech data set, there is um, non-ASCII characters. Um, in other words, to, I guess it's the acute over the E when you um, when they put a French phrase into you know, an English sentence. Um, they needed to go outside the first 128 characters. Um, now, yeah, one of the things was the original recordings were MP3. So they do say that in converting from MP3 to, uh, uh, well, MP3 will have had some um, compression or, you know, there will be some loss of, of um, quality in, in, in the MP3 um, store, storage process. So um, it's a bit unfortunate they weren't originally recorded in WAVE to start with. Um, some other data sets that you hear of, apparently there was a lady called Nancy Krebs and, and she, um, she must have read books or read data sets, uh, read uh, snippets and there's 16,000 WAV files from her and another one referred to as Blizzard 2012 data set. Okay. Um, and in order to, to, I guess, extract the data out of LK, LJ speech data set, they go through a whole lot of steps and it took 441,000 steps um, to, well, whatever, to, to have, have the product you wanted. And apparently it's not till you get to around 20,000 uh, steps that you're actually getting anything intelligible um, out of this, this speech data set. Um, there was there's an, another video clip I watched of a guy who works in a, um, a company that makes gaming machines and he was saying it takes around two weeks of testing to the to, to, well two weeks of, of training of, of, um, but before they can listen to the voice that they hope to use in a game and it may work and it may not so the development is not a very uh, quick development cycle um, and th he's using um, a pretty grunty kind of computer just to, to, to do that two weeks of processing um, anyway once you've installed done that installation You've, you now find that you've got two bash commands. One is uh, just the TTS command, and the other is the TTS server um, command. And in the Python library, you, you find you have a TTS module has been added. In fact, there's quite a lot of modules been added. Um, and if I import it, then um, theoretically I've got a, you know, the, these are the sort of, um, methods or classes that are available um, from from the Python library. Okay, um, so now we can um, have a little go at um, trying to say something. So with bash, if you go type TTS, and that should be hyphen hyphen text, and then some text um, with nothing else, then it will use the default model in Vocoder and um, output a WAV file to the current directory. And then um, it's called um, TTS underscore output dot wave. And it will play the WAV file. And um, 
So uh, here, here's an example where the text is, um, you know, this is a test of the text to speech bash command, and then it, and it will read out the date that gets inserted. So I'm adding a bit of logic to the to it, and then it, having created the output file, the, it will pass on to this next command, which runs MPV to play to play it. Um, so when when we execute this command, it, the, there's about 40 lines get output on the console, and the first couple of lines say um, this is it's going to use the TacoTron 2 um, uh, model, right? And then it's for a vocoder, it's going to use the HiFi GAN um, model. And the very first time I did it after the install, they weren't downloaded. So when I entered this command the very first time, I had to wait maybe two or three minutes while it downloaded these two and then proceeded to build um, the, the WAV file and play it. Um, so maybe, I'll just see what the next slide is. Ah, okay. Th this is, um, the first two lines were uh, here, and then there's um, all this here is to do with um, adjustments that you could set the configuration of the um, uh, audio model, the uh, acoustic model. So um, there's about 30 or so uh, think parameters you could set there, but again, we're just taking the default. And then for the vocoder, um, when we add the vocoder, then that same, those parameters could be uh, adjusted after doing that. Um, and then <clears throat> at the end, um, we get this on the console. And um, we also get an error message, which is a bit sad. And the processing time, 3.7. And real time factor zero point four. Um, so, from when I hit return to when I actually hear the audio, there's a there's a wee bit of a delay. Um, yeah, th this here this error message I found out is because um, my CPU is it's it's a quad core at three point four gigahertz, but it's um, third generation. It's like two thousand and twelve. And it doesn't have um, instruction called AVX2, um, which I don't know how critical it is, but I mean, I still got something out despite the um, some hardware it was trying to use didn't work. Well, um, okay, the other thing I mentioned is uh, it sets up a TTS server. Um, so if we type TTS server, then again, it's going to use these default um, model and um, uh, vocoder. <coughs> and we get that same message, which goes on about 30 different things. And then, um, then it does the, the vocoder. And, um, Okay, it launch gets Flask up and running, and suggests you don't use it in production, and leaves you with making making that as your uh, link to be able to to go and try the the server. Okay, so we'll try that in a minute too. Um, okay, what? Oops. What comes up on your screen is, um, is, is in your um, browser window is something like this, and then you just type in whatever you'd like. Um, this is a TTS server speaking. It, that, it had trouble knowing how to say this. It was sort of try and make a word out of TTS. Um, so I actually just eliminated the TTS. So... Um, when I click on, I change it to this is the server speaking, and when I click on speak, then on the console I see um, this little message, and that's what it, 
the tax is going to process <coughs> took just under a second and boop, 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 boop. Uh, I think that's just feeding out the wave file right okay so and and to speak that the wave file is less than two seconds long um, and one thing I tried is I just tried to get it to say hello Ian and um, note that it's six seconds long which is a bit strange and when you have a listen to it you'll you'll understand why okay um, okay so I'll just exit that and Here's my, oh, no, we'll get rid of that one now. And we go to this one. This should have me, yeah, in my, um, environment. I'll just enlarge that control. Hopefully you can see that okay. Um, oh, I'll just come down. Oh, I did have it there. Okay, this is that um, original one um, where we wanted to say this is a test of text to speech and um, and then give us the date and time. Okay, and it will output it to TTS output dot wave and then MPV will play it back. So we'll give it a try. I'll just turn my microphone off. This is our test of the text to speech bash command. Monday, 807 from 11 July 2022. Okay, hopefully you heard that. And um, it, um, it's, um, what was I going to say? It's, re it's re reasonably good, good quality speech. Um, it's also kind of smart enough. When I had 2007, she said 807. Um, I don't know whether she said PM or not, but um, as you see, it took five seconds or nearly six of processing time before it had the had the, the story ready to be to be spoken. Um, anyway, moving on, we'll try um, um, yeah TT, TTS server. So if I go, oh, I've got my mic on. Haven't I? Yeah. TTS server. Okay, and then I grab that. And we've we got Mozilla. Oh. Um. Oh, that'll do. I'll zoom that in a bit bigger. Um, okay, so if I put in something like um, this is the Oops, I don't like what a variety of this. Okay, so if I, I'll turn this off. And we'll... This is the server on my Mozilla Firefox browser. This is the server on my Mozilla Firefox browser. Okay, so that seems to work all right. And then I said, oh, uh, Let's try hello, Ian. So I'll just turn my mic off.
Hello, Yen. Hello, lo, yo, he, and lo, 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 yo, he, lo, yo. Maybe you'd like to hear that again. Hello, Yen. Hello, lo, yo, he, and lo, 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 yo, he, lo, yo. Hello, world. Hello, world. So they got, we'll just try, they got hello world to write, or to work. Okay. But hello. Yeah, um, well, it's, it's, it's amusing. Um, I'm not quite sure why a yeah. simple word like hello sort of blows Welcome up. to the world of deep learning where you don't know when something goes wrong. <laughs> yeah, it's just like that. You have to accept it that not everything works. And if something goes wrong, you have no idea what to do. Yeah, Ian, as, as soon yeah. as you said, no, oh, that works, I immediately thought magic pixie dust. You know, it's like this. It's like you have a wonderful mathematical theory and all that kind of thing, and then we add a bit of magic pixie dust. Uh, yeah. But the pronunciation was very good. Very it was good synthesized, so it was very real, very real life. Yeah, amazing considering it's not coming from a Google server. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. over to you again. Yeah. Um. Right. Well, where was my presentation? I think I've got a bit more to, to talk about. Ah, and then, I mean, <laughs> we are a Python meeting, and then I tried to make it work in Python, and I, <laughs> I couldn't. <laughs> Despite the fact that they give you a TTS module, um, and when you import from TTS, it will show up having a bin and a, a config and an encoder and a model. And, text-to-speech and utilities and a vocoder. Um, and I assume I would have to use all of them. I would have to get the text in and uh, feed it through an encoder and um, feed it through the vocoder. But um, I can't find any examples anywhere of, of how you actually get it to work. Um, and if I dig around in there, I can, from TTS bin, I can import synthesize and I... It has inside it a synthesizer class, and um, I can try that, but then it, it comes back telling me um, yeah, that I need to use the Koki um, TTS API. Um, so I, I sort of didn't get anywhere with that. Um, and also I found on the read the docs, they do things like, um, you know, this from in this big long line um, you bring in ta taco tron config and um, it looks like that's where you could set things up and, and it has an output command where you could write the wave file um, but i can't see how it puts any text so yeah in that first call that dot tts call could it be that it wants a keyword argument text equals this or reference wave equals something would that be what it is? Because, it, you know, you need to find another text or reference wave. So could it be you got to specify by keyword text equals hello? But the yeah. Synthesis, hmm, the synthesizer, the, the text call, the first one. Yeah. So you, you just passed the positional argument, hello. Maybe it's got to be text equals hello. Oh, uh, okay. Just well, at the end, we can try. We can just try all straight. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. the yeah, give it a go. Open my shell and then. Oh, uh, maybe maybe just finish the presentation because yeah, I think we'll the right. we'll do that and then we'll go back. Um, and, and then uh, so we come back to that one, eh? Does that sound alright? Where am I? I'm just yeah, about finished. Sounds anyway. good. Yeah, I, I think I'm nearly finished. Let me uh, start from current. Okay, so yeah, there's various. One of the things I find quite weird is the first time I do this, 
I, I see all these things, and then the ne next time I might only get F and OS and TTS, and other things don't show up. So I'm, I'm getting sort of some bit weird behaviour in some respects. Anyway, um, oh, okay. We showed I showed you that. Oh, this is not going the right way. Ah, oh. okay. Um, another thing. It, this was the default um, model that was used, um, and it, it, it shows up here as already downloaded. And I tried another one, um, and and so that's why this one shows up as down, downloaded as well. And if we looked, w when you do this um, list models command, at the moment it comes out with 33 different models. And... Uh, these are the ones in English, and then it goes on to Spain and France, and it has UK, but um, there's other ones I haven't shown them here, ZH, Netherlands, Germany, Japan, Taiwan, I suppose. Um, uh, so theoretically, we should be able to use these. Um, you can see these that come from the Linda Johnson, um, they've been... Um, Built these these models have been built using that um, uh, database, speech database, and um, down here this Blizzard one, and hmm, I don't know, I don't know what the MAI one was. Um, okay, and then if we look at the vocoders, that same command, if looking further on. It has the different vocoders. It shows 15 of them, of which the first nine are, are English. Well, these ones say universal. I haven't tried them yet. And this is Hi-Fi GAN is um, the default one it uses. Okay. And I also tried um, this multi-band MELGAN. Um, okay. And um, so, so you, theoretically, you could... Um, when you go to to get it to speak, you can pick a different um, um, acoustic model and a different vocoder. Um, so going back to the bash command, <clears throat> um, I can have a command like, this is the default model in vocoder, that's the text, and then the model name is da -da -da, Tactron 2, which is the default, and the... Um, Vocoder is da -da -da, hi fi GAN v2, which is also the default, and it will output um, the, as default.wave and then we'll play it back. <coughs> um, I can then also have, <coughs> pardon me, um, oh, and then the message you'll get, you'll get about 30 lines of code um, on your console, and, and it's saying it's already downloaded. Um, so, yeah, I can. Oops, oh, yeah. I can't vlog that. Oh, not, yeah, I can't cut and paste it. Um, okay, so we'll, we'll try that one, and I'll, I'll just show you the next one. Um, here I try, um, I have, that was what you just saw, and then this one here is um, uh, the glow. Yeah, I, I changed the model, and I changed the vocoder. And then when we listen to the sounds, we should hear them uh, being a bit different. Um, so this is kind of Tactron 2 um, model versus the Glow TTS model and Vocoder Hi-Fi GAN versus Mel GAN. Okay. Um, 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 I then went on and I tried um, another one, and uh, what did I move to this time? I tried this UK MAI multiband, and because I hadn't downloaded that, I never used it before, I had to wait about five minutes to get those, so uh, that's why the message changes a little bit to downloading the vocoder and downloading the... Um, uh, model, okay, and um, when I run that particular model, for some reason or other, 
it's not a very good model because it seems to be missing consonants, but it seems to be okay with vowels and and some consonants. So if we have a listen to that, you'll hear it didn't work very well. Um, um, what are we doing here? Uh, I was trying, I thought Sam might have been a, this one might have been a male voice, but <laughs> it comes out sounding like a Dalek. So, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know whether Sam was a Dalek or what. Okay, so I'll just, I'll just demo those ones. Um, well, I always come out of that. Yeah. Um. Right, so that's the command we're going to um, execute. Uh, I'll turn my mic off. I don't... This is the default model and vocoder. Now I'll get the one where I've um, I've bought in um, different model and different um, vocoder. Um, we'll try that. This is the Glow model and Melvin vocoder. So they're pretty close. Um, it's a pity there's not a male voice and a female voice, but um, if I just run them one after another, those two files, you can, I think you'll hear that the, the second lady speaks a bit slower. This is the default model and vocoder. This is the Glow model and Melvin vocoder. This is the default model and vocoder. Okay, um, so then I went and tried some other things. Um, I was trying to compare it. Oh, that's the same thing, isn't it? Um, I don't yeah. We'll try this. This is trying to get it to see whether that hello was just something related to the to the web browser. So we're going to use the Tactron uh, 2 and we're going to use the Glow TTS. And this is the one, these because these are the defaults, then this one should give us the funny sounding hello. And um, we're going to see whether this guy knows how to say hello. So I'll just turn my mic off and we'll do that. Hello. 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 Okay. So um, the second one, she gave the very. Um, she got the hello. All right. Um, yeah, what do we got here? Yeah. I then downloaded some more um, models. Um, I'll have a listen to And as you can see, that's the one where 
there must be something wrong with the data or the metadata or something because it, it doesn't like these vowels I and mean, it doesn't like these consonants and um, it did actually produce something but it was pretty um, garbagey right? and I, I actually had one that produced less um, okay and then this one here we'll see what he comes out like Could you hear that? It was, um, it was a bit quiet. Hmm. No, we just... But it's sort of gone musically, musical or something. This is the glow model and Hethelden vocoder. It is actually saying the words, but it's... Uh, this is the glow model and Hethelden vocoder. But it's pretty corrupted yeah um <clears throat> so i think that's that's sort of as far as i've got so far um <clears throat> in in theory i should be able to actually um train train it somehow so that like i could sit here and talk for i think 20 seconds is meant to be the um the minimum <laughs> and and then it should be able to try and produce using using say Linda Johnson's data set. It should be able to then manipulate what she says to be something that sounds like my voice. But um, that's yet to be done. So I guess it's like any questions. And if if you want to try. Um, um, If you want to, have you seen this guy? Hey, Ian, thanks for that. First of all, <laughs> thanks, guys. Um, just maybe going back to the slide where you were trying to do the synthesize and add the keyword text equals to it. Yeah, the one way it came in error said you needed to specify text or a result or a reference wave. My guess is it, it wants you to specify the argument by keyword, and those are the keywords. Remember the Python one that failed? Go up a few slides. Oh, not that one. That one? No. So, yeah. 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 Ah. so where you where that synthesize.synthesizer.tts call, and the error message might be telling you that you got to say text equals hello. Ah, oh, okay. So, so in here I go synthesize dot synthesizer dot tts bracket hello uh, text equals hello. Yes, that's my guess. Yeah, that's my guess. Yeah. Okay. Um, what have I got that somewhere? So I don't have to. I'm just cut and paste it. Um, no. Um. Oh, it's probably here somewhere. Yeah, okay. Um, oh, I'll need to import. What do I have to import? <laughs> you probably already did import it there. Uh, um, I'll just type the import. What was it? From TTS bin import. But you probably still have to import the TTS, right? Hey, Jupiter can be fun for this. Can be. You're going to have to do it line by line. Hmm. Is that it? Yeah. Okay, we've got synthesized there. And then. You want to change that to be text? Yes. 
Yep. Right there? Yep. Um, ah, then do you need to instantiate? Oh you, oh, you need to synthesize a class that you need to instantiate. Or TTS as a class. Or TTS? No, sorry, no, no synthesize, synthesize it. as a class, yes. Yeah, so make s equal synthesize dot synthesizer brackets. Mm -hmm. S equals. S equals? Yeah, something. Or and, then re the and remove the TTS and replace it with. S yes. equals. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Oh, missing. Oh, right. Oh, so that's pointing basically to your model and your configuration. And then you have to dig a bit deeper if you want to. So I guess that's probably what the TTS command line interface does for you. It knows what the um, torch model is. That's the checkpoint. And the config file that goes with it is probably either YAML or a Python file. Got to start with in source code. Yeah. In lieu of documentation. Yeah. More else means use the source code. But the other thing I wanted to say was, you know that robotic kind of voice. There's a there's a gadget that musicians can use, where you have a, a pipe that feeds sound from a synth into your mouth. Have you seen that? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. And then they make the mouth movements. And uh, the, yeah, and they get this robotic kind of sound. Yeah. yeah. See these last two lines here. Um, oh, it's a bit small. Isn't it? Th these last two lines. That that's from the docs. Yeah. I'm thinking in here I'd find an example, but um, uh, this is I think to do with training. To, to um, understand your voice. Oh, yeah, I'm talking you know, about training up another voice. I couldn't find an example of just uh, um, text to speech using the default uh, values. Yeah. So. Any other thoughts, or we call it quite quick? You need the checkpoint, you need the Yeah, I think we're probably going to leave it for tonight. I think there's probably still quite a bit involved in order to get that going from the Python side of things, but um, nonetheless, thanks for that. Yeah. Have, have a look at that shell command. It could very well be it's just a Python script. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it was all written in Python. Python. Mm -hmm. Valid value. Yeah, I mean PyTorch or Torch has Python bindings, so they'll probably just have wrappers around where they're actually loading the models and then actually pushing stuff through and then doing stuff. So the command line interface will take out a lot of the ugliness that actually happens behind the scenes. Yeah, yeah. That Mozilla project was speech to text as well. Oh, but yeah. Thanks, Ian. Yep. Okay, okay. guys. Yeah. Well, that's as I got. <laughs> All right. In that case, thanks again, and I'll stop the recording.